Snowboarding is one of those sports that doesn't really feel like a sport, even though today it is a sport. But back in the day, and how everything started for me was that I saw Mag, the snowboarder magazine, and first minute I knew I just had to do that. I'm like, this is it. This is what I'm going to do. It all started back in 1989 in uh, British Columbia, Canada, in a small town called Rock Creek. And the whole area is just farms and cowboys. And me and my friends were into snowboarding, which was a pretty new sport at that time. And basically it was more like a rebellion against the local lifestyle, which we didn't actually really understand. And we just went riding as much as we could and kind of lived the lifestyle of a board riding um, crew. Um, it's a pretty funny story because Stu Carlson's grandma, she actually moved to Canada from, from the UK and she had this proper British accent and a lot of the words she would use were kind of like uh, not really common in Canadian English and horse feathers was one of them and she would kind of use that to comment what we did, you know, and for her skateboarding, snowboarding was total nonsense so she would go horse for this this horse for this that and we thought it was really funny so once when uh, there was an art project in high school um, Joel did this linoleum print and we actually used that to put like all these kind of funky prints on t-shirts and sweatshirts and that was kind of like the beginning of the name itself. I came back to Czech uh, in 1992 to brush up on the language to catch up on the history of the country and to do that I started attending high school in Pilsen and right away I noticed this guy, long hair, a death box sweatshirt which was Pavel and uh, pretty quickly be we became friends and um, I told him about horse feathers and the ideas we had in Canada and then I thought it was a pretty good idea to continue on and to um, start making into a brand. So we talked about it for a few months and then in 1993 we launched our official first collection of 50 t-shirts and 200 stickers and out of the 50 t-shirts we ended up giving most of the way to our friends as kind of sponsorship so you know being that the first collection it still looks pretty amazing that that's how it all kicked off. So the early days were in my apartment and as everything grew, the apartment got small for that because we'd be like adding boxes of stuff. So we would have like a table with a computer, a fax and a phone. And then next room was the little warehouse. We got pretty tight in that apartment. So we rented a small office, which was pretty cool. You know, we had a little, little uh, corner with, with the com computer, another corner with the rack, with the proto samples and uh, another room which was the warehouse but you know you can't really imagine a proper office it was always a bit of a party room some beers some cigarettes you know just kind of coming in going out but getting our work done but still kind of enjoying it as a complete lifestyle we were, we were pretty punk that's for sure you know like uh, with with outerwear even though it took us a few years to work up to um, outerwear um, it was always like in the back of our minds because like, you know, we're snowboarders, we went snowboarding and we always want to have our own clothing. But in the beginning, we just had to learn how to make uh, good quality products, how to make um, everything starting from t-shirts and sweatshirts and jeans and other stuff. So we didn't feel that we could make good outerwear right from the beginning. So it took us a bunch of years to discover the whole manufacturing process and in 1997 we were like we're set let's let's do this so we just went out and bought fabrics we bought zippers we bought liners we bought insulation labels like buttons like all this stuff so we had these charts which which we actually uh kind of like filled in these like numbers for for whatever we needed like how many meters of threads do you need how many buttons do you need how many labels and then we kind of like combined it all we ordered it all from these specialized factories and suppliers and then we just kind of like dumped it in our um, supplier or the, the, the factory or a little factory which made the clothing in their like um, warehouse and then they just completed it according to our kind of designs which we which we did and the first collection was five jackets, two pants 
and in the end, like, you know, it was pretty successful. We were pretty happy with it and, and the quality is good. You know, there are some style or some pieces still kick around until today. So that first year, 97, 98 winter, um, you know, that was the first outerwear line got sold out. We were happy as soon as the products were out of the warehouse, we were pretty clean. We just got on a plane, went to Canada for two months of snowboarding. Pretty much made it into an awesome road trip where we had a van and just went from uh, resort to resort, visited some of the classics in BC like uh, Whitewater, Red Mountain, um, some of the great uh, places in the US like Mount Baker and Mount Bachelor. So we just went riding and completely like lived out of the van in some cheap motels and really just spent every day possible out on the mountain and that was like an awesome trip so that was like a great uh, story where uh, we were watching the Canada Czech uh, hockey team play at the Nagano Olympics and we're being pretty wild like close to midnight at the motel and the manager is calling us to like you know calm down a little bit and we're like yeah but we're watching the hockey game and and she's like oh yeah okay i get that i understand but you know he didn't know we we're like rooting for the czech team which was of course like the one that won so that was a pretty pretty massive party afterwards After coming back from Canada after two months of just purely snowboarding, you know, we realized like this is not that easy. And of course, there was so much work to be handled and all these like faxes and at that time emails and unanswered phone calls. So we had to kind of get everything in line and get structured a bit because we we did have a plan to uh, kind of continue making outerwear and like I, you know, see it it just needs a plan and you have to stick to the plan to make sure you deliver good quality and you're on time and you have good designs so we had to kind of like sit down and think about it a bit more and like decide whether we want to commit or not and we were like yeah we definitely want to do this and and we have to kind of uh, think of it a bit more as a company and and kind of make sure we're able, we're able to handle it Uh, since we want to uh, establish uh, kind of a footprint in terms of uh, snowboarding, we decided to sponsor and uh, work on, on certain events which uh, made a difference. And one of them was uh, the Horse of the Pleasure Jam, which took place at Dachstein. Horse of the Pleasure Jam was like a big event at that time because definitely being uh, the first one during the season um, in the central area of the Alps and uh, for many people it was like one of those first uh, events where you would come and ride and party. There definitely was a lot of um, partying and for some people I think they did more partying than riding. But uh, for sure, um, the park was awesome. The crew, the Q Parks guys, which handled the production of the event and building of the snow park, always did an awesome job. So on that side, the riding was amazing, but uh, for sure the parties were pretty heavy. And around that time, we were also uh, doing a really cool um, city event because a lot of the people that are interested in snowboarding might not be traveling to uh, on on snow event early in the season because like we felt that there's a lot of snowboarders out there which just ride when winter is on which is january february maybe march and so we kind of wanted to make sure that we could uh, do a fun event in the city and it was called horse of the city jib and uh, gradually we built it up to uh, pretty solid event which saw at one point around like 5,000 people that came and saw saw the competition which was uh, invitational only, international riders, good prize money, uh, super nice setup in the downtown of Pilsen close to Gothic Church which was built in the 13th century so the setting and the whole event was epic. At one point we were actually getting too broad in our focus and we did actually um, sponsor uh, t 
teams of friends and 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 team riders, which makes made sense in in the way board sports were growing um, after the year 2000, but eventually got to a point where it was just uh, too big, too complex, too confusing, and we felt we needed to uh, refocus back on our DNA, on what made Horse Feathers the brand it is today, and that was namely snowboarding, and the most uh, significant move forward was to put together a great international team of snowboarders, awesome characters, great people, uh, guys like Aki Helgason, people like Mans Hedeberg, Tal Trolton and others which really constitute of the, of the idea of snowboarding. They bring it together, they make it happen, they're real guys out there and also great friends. So for us that was uh, the step which solidified what we all believe in. Aldor actually joined us in this really special way because since uh, one of his major sponsorships ended, he was looking for a path forward. And uh, as we are in close touch with his brother, Aki, um, we started talking how to cooperate. And of course, he's a rider which needs uh, solid support and uh, good backup. And we decided to uh, launch a brand together called A Trip. But after a couple of seasons, uh, we found out that Halder's momentum is pretty massive and that the best way to cooperate further and to make uh, or to create an ideal setup was to merge a trip into horse for this as a kind of a Haldor's um, signature line. And that happened um, last season. And since then, he's fully integrated into the whole horse of this team. And that's a, that's an honor to work with Haldor and Aki, his brothers, and all the other guys, having such a tight, compact team with um, great personalities because we don't like look at them only as team riders, but as friends and family. And for us, that is like the solid base we really like to operate from. I guess one of those things that really comes to mind quite often is uh, the positive aspect of being with dynamic people and people which are quite often open-minded people which are in a sense youthful. They're like not just old dudes sitting in an office and uh, you know flipping through pages of um, numbers and just going from meeting to meeting and even if we do have times of the year where it's like that you still kind of have this uh, fully powered energy based sport and people which are really positive and outgoing and they're out there doing something so I just think it's uh, the energy behind it which is the biggest uh, positive aspect of uh, working in snowboarding. Of course so this is more like that idea that started 30 years ago and that just carries through the three decades. So I think it's personally for me, everything and anything that happened in relation to the brand, to the company, to my life. So it's more like a kind of a 30 year project. So I don't think I could call it like a business plan. I don't think I could call it a sport. It's like a 30 year experience and something that still carries on with so much energy and potential just as in the first days.